Welcome back to Autism Live and to Ask Dr. Doreen. We're here with Dr. Doreen Grampuche and she's answering your questions in real time. Our next question, hello Shannon and Dr. Doreen with an exclamation point. My five-year-old son attends a progressive kindergarten class. It is not exactly a special education program, but he has a shadow teacher knowledgeable in ABA. We're having a hard time finding school appropriate reinforcers for him that will not distract the other kids in, in school. Visual and auditory items are the strongest reinforcers for him but they can be quite distracting in school even glitter bottles for example can be distracting because naturally the kids are drawn to these novel items any suggestions on reinforcers appropriate in a school setting and how they can be delivered discreetly thank you and all the best to you and card your show has been such a blessing sharing so much valuable information to the public reaching across the globe and can I just say she says I love skills any chance you can open services in the <coughs> wow that's so nice that I, it is lovely I, I thank you very much for writing in and I, I love that you're in the Philippines I didn't know that um, <coughs> we would love to open services anywhere what we do internationally I've stopped focusing on actually opening card sites what I do, what we do in international places is we will uh, affiliate with an existing school or clinic and then we will tr train them and supervise them. Um, that's what we did with South Africa, and we still are very involved with them. We have literally supervisors going to South Africa every other month, and we have for six years, I think, six or seven years. So it's a long time, and South Africa has three sites, and we heavily, <coughs> it's a complete card program. Um, same thing we did in Thailand, and we'd be happy to do it in the Philippines. Now, so if you know of any good schools, please let us know that are interested in doing the card model. Um, going back to this, <clears throat> I don't know the functioning level of the child. My recommendation would be to try to implement a token system in the class if possible. And that has to do with if your child, if the child is able to jump on board with the token economy. A token economy could work for the whole class, not just for him. Um, and basically, just let me describe what it is for him and then I'll describe how it would work for if the teacher decided to use it for everyone. So there would be a series of things that are required for him to do for, by which he would get a reinforcer. You, what you're doing is you're giving the direct reinforcer, let's say, glitter bottles. I don't know the length of time you give it to him and I don't know for what, but assume there's a behavior that's expected and then he gets X amount of time with the glitter bottle. What you're doing with a token economy is you are just giving the reinforcer being the token, being the glitter bottle after the person earns a certain number of tokens. So it could be a one-to-one -one exchange. In other words, he would get one token and then he'd be allowed to go outside for five seconds, five minutes, play with the glitter bottle, or just leaving the room might be a reinforcer, or uh, the teacher might want to put an area in the classroom, which is the reinforcement area. This is extremely effective, like <clears throat> for all students. What you could do is you could have an area which is packed with reinforcers for all the kids, and you as a child can access that area for however long it's not is conducive to her teaching her class for specific behaviors. Um, so that's really all it is. She would put up a board, she would have all the names of the kids, and she would have the tasks that they're required to do and what they earn for each task. And once they've earned, let's say, the tokens, by the way, would be stickers, could be drawings, like we used to do just happy faces. You know, every time you finish a task, you get a happy face. If you get five happy faces, you then go to the reinforcement area, like the fun house or whatever it is. And that could be applied to everyone so that everyone's really motivated to pay attention, do their work, and then gain access to those reinforcers. In Jem's, most of his early classes, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, even third grade, there was some form of a treasure box that we to go to the treasure box That's it. and there was a choice of toys that came from a dollar store exactly that they could choose between and it was such a big deal to get Huge. to the tre treasure box That's right. that people tried to gain those tokens. That's right. Um, and we also, just so you know, we've done several videos here on Autism Live about token economies and we even have a template for one. 
um, and show you how to laminate and make the Great. little stickers and put the little Velcro on for one type of a token economy. And we talk about the ones that are digital. Cause there's Absolutely. Oh, yes. So if you search our topics about token economies, you'll see that there's a bunch of different things that we have there. And if you don't find what you like there, Pinterest, there are all kinds oh, yeah. of things on Pinterest. If you put in token economy um, and if you put in classroom, they have teacher sites where teachers... Teachers actually make this kind of stuff now, the ones that are good at it. Yes. And then they sell it at low cost to other people. Amazing. So and it's called Teachers Paying Teachers. That's great. Um, and so you can pay $5 and they'll send you off whatever token account it's. So check it out on Pinterest. That's awesome. You can lose That's your really mind great. on Pinterest in the best possible way. Absolutely. I love, I love me some Pinterest. Okay. I want to shift now to a question that just came in on the live feature mm -hmm. from our West Virginia mom. Um, she says, hey, Shannon and Dr. Doreen, her daughter had strep throat for a total of 20 days, started having increased anxiety, OCD, hyperactivity, paranoia, tics, and a long list of other behaviors that followed the strep infection. After seeing her neurologist, she received a diagnosis pandas. of pandas. Yes. Yeah. The tics are painful. She is paranoid. Regression in potty training, regression in speech, and the meltdowns have increased significantly. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations on dealing with pandas, and how do I determine what is autistic behavior that needs to be addressed and, and what is a side effect from pandas that she can't control? Thank you always for the support and help. We love you guys. Thank you very much. There are, she, you should be talking to a physician who specializes in pandas, and this would be an immunologist. And an immunologist will actually offer some medications that will help suppress some of these side effects. And as you were beginning to read the list, I was like, oh, this is pandas. Uh, and that is, of course, pediatric autoimmune neurological disorder associated with strep. That's how you get pandas. That's a mouthful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you knew that. <laughs> yes. So the first time I learned about pandas, I remember actually uh, it, it was in a continuing ed lecture, and I was like, that sounds like a lot of our kids. Like, I wonder how many of our kids have pandas. So I wouldn't, th please don't think of them as, if it's a symptom of pandas, it's not something she can control. You get back into, it, it's, how do I express this? It's kind of like um, if you are, let's say if you are ill for whatever reason, let's say you have a, a gastrointestinal infection or you have uh, food poisoning or whatever it is, you have some sort of illness during that period of time, so much biochemistry changes that, for instance, you will become more irritable, you will have, like, your skin will crawl, um, you'll have, you know, headaches, various things, but you can still change some of those things. So the fact that you become more ir irritable doesn't mean that you can't control your behavior. You can. It's a little harder because you're more irritable and, like, you're on edge, but you can. And so, so a lot of these things, ticks are very, very hard to control, but they are controllable. Okay. Ticks are things that the behavior, you can shape the control of ticks. There's no question, behaviorally. Um, but mainly, if it is really pandas, which obviously she's been diagnosed in, there are immune medication that you should be receiving. So you need to talk to an immunologist, first of all. And then uh, don't, I mean, it's so difficult, I know, with our kids when they... Uh, lose skills they've already um, achieved, but don't worry, she will, they, you can regain those skills and they will regain faster than when you taught them the first time. While she's going through whatever the treatment is to uh, eradicate the, the pandas, do we put less demands on the child? No, or? not really, because okay. at this point you're past the strep, and so now you should get the medication that helps the immune system, essentially strengthens the immune system, and then you should just start reteaching. Okay. Start reteaching and just, nice. you know, at any given time, you want to always gauge how much pressure you should put or how much demand you should put, and that's always equivalent to the amount of reinforcer. Okay. As much demand as reinforcer, then your program is good. Okay. If you have too much demand, not enough reinforcer, child falls apart not enough demand, too much reinforcer, you're not moving forward. Okay. So you just have to always balance that. Okay, cool. Uh, and then let us know how things go, please. And best of luck. Yes, best of luck. Hugs to you. I know that's hard. 
Uh, I want to move on to the next question. I'm working with a family with two autistic children. They are 12 and 5. Can you refer me to any in-home ABA therapists that serve Carver, Massachusetts? I should have looked on the map to see how close that was to Boston. I don't know. I don't know either, but I would suggest that you try to get in touch with our, our Woburn office. Yes. And they can give you more information about what's available back there. Okay, cool. Um, and then somebody who wrote, writes in and says, I need help with getting my child in a school for autism. We have no other information about their age or where they are. Right. If you would perhaps write in to us, we, are, we do have CART Academies. We are expanding the CART Academies. And then outside of CART, of course, there's many schools that are pretty good. And we can, again, another good source for that would be Love My Provider. That, uh, that website is very good in terms, they, it definitely has a category of listed schools. Okay, wonderful. And this is probably going to be our last question. Good morning. My son has high-functioning autism. Mm -hmm. He's five. I've noticed an increase in hyperactive behavior when his dad comes home from work. Mm -hmm. What can we change or do differently? Is he just too excited? Also, he likes to pretend fight with his friends. It's never gotten out of control. Would, it, would enrolling him in a martial arts class be a good idea or a terrible idea? And thank you for your amazing help. That's a great idea. As, uh, enrolling him in martial arts is a great idea as long as you have a good instructor. Uh, because martial arts teaches, uh, the opposite of what most people think, martial arts, arts teach you control, self-control. Yeah. And so I think it's a great idea because they will teach him to control his uh, whatever rough housing or any kind of thing that he learns in martial arts to specific times and areas. So I think that's a very, very, very good out for him. Now, what happens, and you see this in all a lot of different species, not just human beings, but like I, I'm assuming that he has had uh, physical fun with dad. So like maybe in the past dad has thrown him up and down or whatever and so now he gets like just, it's classical conditioning. It's like, oh, here's the guy who's gonna do some physical stuff with me so he gets hyper. Uh, the easiest thing is to reverse that is just to have dad do a very peaceful activity when he comes home. So uh, immediately when dad comes home, like he will turn on some calming music, sit with him and maybe look at a book or sit down and look at TV together, or you know, sit on a um, hammock, or something that's very calming and soothing, and then before you know it, dad will be associated with more of a calming type thing. That's wonderful. Yeah. Our, our dads tend to be the... the you know, Hyper-causing. I, I always say that, it's, especially when I'm at the check stand with my husband and my son, even now, the gem is so big <laughs> and he's 13, it's like two puppies that have gone awry, and then I have to police the two of them. <laughs> Trying to That's do the hilarious. transaction, and I and now I they've got just gotten to the point where I pretend I don't know them. Yeah, I just pretend that I've never seen them before. <laughs> that I have no idea who they are. It's I awesome. walk out of the store, and they're like, "Where'd you go? Where'd you go?" And I go, "I don't know you." <laughs> I have no idea. I just completely uh, talk about so the response. That's so funny. I love that. I don't know them because um, I used to be like, "Stop it, the two of you, knock it off, don't you?" You know, and I'd be like, "They're like, you gotta sign." I'm always the person who does the card and then forgets. To oh do yeah, oh, seventeen yeah. steps, and everybody in the line at Trader Joe's is like, "Wait, sometime could you finish?" Anyway, that's my that's the that's perfect. Of my life. Uh, we are unfortunately out of time, but we it was a pleasure. You. Thank you so we much. So enjoy when we have time with you.